Wow, what an incredible hour we had with uh, Paul McGuire. Again, that's paulmcguire.us is his website. Uh, my next guest this morning, and the reason I brought Josh on today is because I was talking about frequency this morning. I was talking about energy. That's why I brought Paul on. Now we also are bringing Josh on this morning. Uh, Josh Hart is the director of Stop Smart Meters. He has worked in the energy industry as a transportation planner, an environmental advocate, and freelance journalist. He attained his MSc, a Master's in Science degree in Transport Planning in the U.K. and Bristol in 2008, he completed research entitled Driven to Excess, presenting the, socially, the social and quality of life impacts of the automobile traffic on local residents. He's an excellent interview as far as on smart meters. He's been fighting for years now trying to stop smart meters. I wanted to bring him on today because we need to realize that all of this electromagnetic frequency that we're being subjected and bombarded with is dangerous. It causes all types of health problems, including brain cancer with cell phones. And so I wanted to bring Josh on this morning so he could go into detail about this. We'll be taking a bunch of phone calls for him at the bottom of the hour. And, again, for all the phone calls we couldn't get through with Paul McGuire, we'll bring him back on for a full two hours. Welcome, Josh. I hope you liked the introduction. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really happy to be here. It's my pleasure. Tell me about smart meters. Tell me about why there's such a problem. Tell me about tell cell phones electromagnetic radiation. Tell me about what it does to human beings and energy levels in the system and how it can actually change DNA. This is your shot. You've got five minutes. Let's have an introduction. Do it, Josh. Well, there's this, this, this inconsistency happening. And, you know, on the one hand, what we're, what we're getting from science is an increasing awareness and understanding that wireless radiation on the non-ionizing side of the spectrum that we use routinely in uh, devices such as cell phones and iPads uh, and, you know, cordless phones is uh, bad for your health. Uh, and that, that's kind of an understatement when you talk to the, uh, the, the hundreds and thousands of, 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 of brain tumor uh, victims who are, are suffering right now because they were not warned by uh, the wireless industry um, not to, you know, spend all day on their phone or to no, hold you're, it up against their head. You're absolutely right. Now, let me share something else with you very quickly. This is important because we'll be going to break in just a minute. I want to get this out. Whenever you combine aspartame with nitrites, uh, you form a chemical in your brain that's called the dikidiopeprazine. That dikidiopeprazine the degrades the form of nitrosurea, and nitrosurea, one of the most effective agents known to man for producing malignant brain tumors. So in other words, when you want a laboratory animal to get brain cancer, you give it basically a pepperoni pizza and a diet soda. And so it's on the list of my top ten foods never to eat at healthmasters.com. And now what you need to realize is this. When we start dumping all these dikidiopeprazines into the body and all these nitrosurias into the body from all the food and all the chemicals we're dumping into the body, and then we combine that with electromagnetic frequencies and we're holding up the day, basically a, a mini microwave oven to our ear and we're continually cooking brain cells, it massively increases the risks of brain tumors and brain cancer, and the studies have proven that conclusively. And that's why one of the reasons I wanted to, I wanted to bring Josh on. So go ahead and talk some more. We've got a few more minutes here, Josh. Go ahead yeah, and tell about the, the brain cancer. What, what, one of the more concerning studies uh, comes, uh, you know, with regard to the uh, effects of, of, of microwave radiation from cell phones and other wireless devices on the blood-brain barrier. I mean, the blood-brain barrier is intended by our body to keep out toxins from our brain uh, that we need to function. And so there's a synergy between chemical toxicity and, and, and radiation toxicity where the, 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 you, you, know, the, uh, you eat something like a pepperoni pizza or something with preservatives or something, some chemicals, some heavy metal gets in your body. Uh, normally, that your blood-brain barrier would keep it out, but when we're being subjected to smart meters and cell phone towers and our cell phones all day, uh, that, that blood-brain barrier is compromised and the toxins can come in our brain. So we'll be right back with Josh. Josh, what's your website? How can people get in touch with you and find out more about you? Our website is stopsmartmeters.org, stopsmartmeters.org. Okay, stopsmartmeters.org. And when they go to that website, Josh, what are they going to find? Uh, well, they're going to find a lot of resources uh, about how to, uh, first of all, get the meter off of your house if you have it, um, and how to prevent a, meter, a smart meter from coming onto your home. Uh, mostly a lot of studies and links to resources and advice from other activists, connect, connections in uh, their local area. We've got uh, uh, Stop Smart Meters chapters all around the country, people fighting uh, the, 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 this force deployment, and uh, really, you know, to, to, just to um, acquaint people with the tactics and the stories from the movement uh, and to empower people to take action and resist these things in their own neighborhoods. 
Josh, what is the major reason they're putting these smart meters on the home? When you contact the electrical companies, they say it's to provide a more stable source of power, and if there's a power outage, they can reroute power, they can prevent brownouts and blackouts, they can turn power on and off during peak loads. What is the real reason they're doing this? Do you have any idea? I mean, I know, I'm sure that you do, but what, 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 is, what is your research, research proven? Well, that's, that's a story. You know, they say that the, the, the smart meters will reduce energy consumption and they'll help prevent climate change. There's no evidence for those things at all. Um, the, the evidence, the independent evidence, very strongly points to the fact that the utility business model is fading away and they are looking for new sources of revenue um, in the digital economy. And uh, the uh, association of uh, utility uh, companies uh, recently just stated that they are planning to make more money from selling your private data about what you do in your home to corporations than they are from the actual sale of electricity. So what they're... They no, whoa, 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 hang on a second, Josh. You just said a whole bunch of <laughs> three sentences. I know, I can't believe it either. <laughs> well, well, no, let's, let's back, back out of that for a second. You're saying they're going to sell our personal data now, you know, I heard people talking on the radio how our dishwashers are spying on us and our TVs are spying on us and there's all kinds of power lines coming in that are spying on us and hearing our conversations. Is any of that true, Josh? Absolutely. Unfortunately, the, the new smart meters uh, have a, a great deal of more uh, capability to record what goes on in your home in, in fine-grained detail. Where okay, well, okay, well, okay, well, you've got you to give me a second here. Forgive me for, yeah. you know, being, uh, you know, slowing you down a little bit on this, but this is stuff that people have got to listen to. How in the world does a smart meter record data in your house? Please explain that to me. Well, so there's two ways primarily. One is just from your overall electric consumption signature. Every appliance has a specific identifiable signature. Not only every appliance, but every kind of model or every year of appliance has that signature. So the electric company can look over a month of your electric consumption records and say, ah, this person woke up at 6.30 and they made a cup of tea and then they took a shower and, you know, maybe they, um, you know, and with smart appliances like a fridge, for example, uh, with RFID technology, your electric company will, will even know uh, what you're taking out of your fridge, what you're cooking, whether you're using the microwave or a whoa, range. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, you got to slow down. Tell me why they'll know what I take out of my refrigerator and tell me what RFID, are you talking that people – that all of the products that we're buying, consumables, our luncheon meats, et cetera, if we're eating that kind of stuff or our beef or our chicken or whatever we're doing has RFDI chips in it yeah. and, the, and the refrigerator tracks what goes in and out of our refrigerator? Yeah, this is all happening, uh, and largely behind corporate closed doors. I mean, this is the, the brave new world that they would like to see, uh, where they can uh, acquire information about you that's useful without you even knowing about it. So with this technology, you know, a packaged food uh, typically uh, has RFID uh, identification chips embedded in the packaging now, uh, and then with a smart fridge, uh, you you know, your fridge is going to know what you take out and when. So, for example, the fact that you took out your, you know, Ted, you took out your Ben and Jerry's four times last night uh, might be of, of interest to your uh, health insurance company who might raise your premiums based on that uh, information acquired from your uh, electric company. So this is a, a okay. backdoor okay. attempt to find out. Okay, so, so, so hey, let me, let, me, let me break this down for a bite so we can try to get this figured out here. So we've got our cookies and our Ben and Jerry's and our whatever we're buying, our packaged foods in our refrigerator that contains RFDI chips. Our refrigerator is reading what we're taking out of the refrigerator saying, hey, oh, by the way, Ted is eating something he shouldn't eat. He's eating something off his top ten list of foods never to eat. And so right. basically we need to basically tell the meter now to call the meter company to basically find out and to basically track him for what he's doing so we can basically then do what? How would they sell the information? Would they send us an email? Would they send us a would they post something on our Yahoo or our Facebook when we go into our email addresses? I mean, uh, how would they know the Unfortunately not. You know, the San Francisco Chronicle found that PG&E had already uh, passed thousands of, uh, of private utility records to law enforcement uh, and to other third parties without the permission of the person uh, whose data, uh, you know, it belongs to. So with the home area network, which is called the Han system, smart meters will be able to communicate with your air conditioner, your fridge, your dishwasher, um, they may be able to even turn them those those
those appliances off when demand gets higher. So this is, is very much a project and a, a massive, massive, uh, 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 you know, multi-billion dollar uh, program by the utilities to boost their bottom line, to uh, uh, acquire your private data without compensation, to install wireless uh, 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 radiation-emitting devices on your home against your will that have been uh, shown to emit radiation that the World Health Organization says may cause cancer. Uh, and then not only th that, but they've been implicated in uh, hundreds, probably thousands at this point, of, of, of house fires and explosions related to faulty design and faulty installation. So the, the, the smart grid and the smart meters uh, that, that make up the smart grid are really uh, showing themselves after five years uh, of, of use uh, and, and public experience to be a complete debacle that has cost a huge amount of money uh, and is not uh, living up to the, uh, the promises of the industry made. Okay, how do we... Uh... Okay, if we, if we put a wire bracket around our, smart, our regular meter, that's a normal meter, and we tell them they can't take it off, can they get a court order and actually remove that bracket to put their smart meter underneath it? Well, look, about half the country, half of the U.S. has smart meters, half still have analog, uh, and uh, utilities have been behaving differently around the country depending on how much public awareness there is in a particular location. If there's a lot of public awareness about these problems, then they may not be able to get away with bullying or, or coercing an individual household if they refuse the, the meter. Um, the bottom line that people should know is that they have a legal right to refuse a smart meter, period. Um, the utility may threaten you. They may lie to you. They may say things that aren't true. They may threaten you with federal prosecution. Um, but at the end of the day, this is your property, and uh, many states have uh, opt-out policies, which you know we consider you know, paying to avoid harm to be extortion. Uh, but there is a system for uh, providing analogs to people. In California, it's ten dollars a day. Arizona just voted it's five dollars. Uh, sorry, ten dollars a month. Uh, five, Arizona just voted it's five dollars a month. Uh, in Vermont, the opt-out is free by uh, state legislation. So there's a lot of different policies going on around the country. Um, and what, but what people need to know in terms of their own neighborhood and their own house is that if they organize together and, and insist on an analog and do not uh, uh, back down, uh, they will be in a, a lot stronger position, and uh, people can read a whole lot more about that. Well, I've, I've, also read, I've also read, Josh, that some of the utility companies, when they're being forced to pull off the smart meters, just refuse to put power back onto the house. Is that true? Well, yeah, I mean, some, uh, you know, some people have uh, experienced the power disconnects when, you know, either refusing to pay the uh, opt-out fee, as we, uh, you know, our household a year ago was disconnected by uh, by our electric provider for refusing to pay these opt-out fees. Uh, we're, the, I think, the only person in California now, uh, most, there are thousands of other people refusing to pay the fees whose, whose power has not been disconnected. Um, but, but generally, you know, when there's a movement, when there's awareness raising, when there's uh, a group that starts that, that, that whose job it is to, to oppose these and to educate the public, and people stand strong, they can really keep these out of their neighborhood. Uh, but if people kind of cower behind the curtains and, and, you know, hope that someone else will fight it and not get out there on the street and, and, and prevent them, then um, sometimes they get deployed. Now, um, now, Josh, let me ask you a question. The smart meter, you're saying that it actually tracks the refrigerator and all that kind of stuff. Is that because it's doing it through the electrical lines, or is it doing it through the actual uh, frequencies that are being generated by the smart meter? There's two systems. I mean, one of the basics system is just, you know, it records what your electric usage is, you know, every few seconds through the month, and they can, based on that, on that, those electric signatures, they can tell uh, what your what power you're using. It also uses the a separate wireless uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz network to uh, communicate with your appliances, and then uh, not as a direct way of uh, obtaining that information. Josh, if you put lead shielding around the smart meter but allow them to read the meter at the end of the month, would that stop this? Many people have um, shielded their meters, wrapped them with aluminum foil. Uh, you, you know, the important thing to know about, about shielding is that it's always second best. It's always better to remove the source of the RF, um, to, 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 you know, use corded landline and to use Ethernet cables for your computer rather than Wi-Fi, to um, use an analog meter rather than a smart meter. But some people, for whatever reason in their situation, cannot do that. If you're going to try shielding, we recommend uh, purchasing one of the Cornet ED78S uh, electro small meters that are available through our website at a very reasonable price. Uh, they're, they're very good tools uh, because normally uh, radio frequency and microwave radiation is invisible. We don't know what the levels are around us, and this kind of opens up a whole a new world for people to be able to go around their home, around their neighborhood, where they work, and assess how high the radiation is and maybe develop strategies to, to mitigate it. 
Uh, but without a, a meter like that, you're kind of going blind. Um, aluminum foil can block uh, RF signals, but it can also reflect other RF signals back uh, from within your environment. So you really need a meter to, to test your work if you're going to try shielding. I straight to the phone calls. Before we get to the calls, I guess I'm not going to go right straight to them. I'm going to ask you a quick question, Josh. How, you said you could use aluminum foil or you could use lead shielding around them because I've seen both of those for sale. It seems to me that lead would be a lot more effective than aluminum would be because, like you said, aluminum can reflect other types of power meter signals back into your house, too. Well, I don't know, Ted, if you've ever put uh, aluminum foil around your, your food and tried to stick it in the microwave, but it, it doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And, um, and microwaves are the same kind of frequencies as, you know, we um, are trying to protect against here. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a very tricky thing, uh, a shielding meter, because you need to shield every single little cranny where the microwaves could come out. And how about how about heat being generated from a lead shield? Would that have a tendency to make it could it cause some of the fires that you think you're talking about, or maybe it doesn't produce that much heat? Yeah, I think the, the, really the focus needs to be on removing these things from your house, period, um, and shielding is only a very last-ditch attempt. And if you're going to shield, uh, things like aluminum foil or double uh, foil bubble wrap seem to work just as well as lead and at a fraction of the cost. Okay, um, and also, how about electrical? You know, we have electrical energy throughout our houses. We have wires running throughout our whole house. I mean, you know, basically, we, I guess we all need to move into a Faraday cage if we want to have complete protection. But, I mean, reality is, how do you stop all of this stuff? Because, you know, you've got the electromagnetic radiation coming right out of the power sockets in the house, too. I mean, how yeah, I mean, you know, the, 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 the ultimate uh, reality here is that is that you know, most of the microwave radiation that people are exposed to are, are you know, um, waves that we are exposing ourselves to voluntarily. And through a little bit of education, a little bit of awareness about what uh, emits radiation in the household, and how we can swap those things out for, for safer technology, uh, that can, you know, result in a huge, huge reduction in, in, in exposure to how, how about micro, How about microwave ovens themselves? I've talked about them many, many times. What do you think about microwave ovens? Not good. I would never use one uh, unless it was an emergency or something. You know, basically they leak. Uh, the, the seals that are intended to keep the microwaves in the oven are, are notoriously leaky. Uh, we've measured very, very high levels coming uh, uh, from microwaves. Uh, in addition, there's health issues related related to, you know, uh, the, the vibrating the, the molecules of the, uh, uh, you know, heating the molecules of the food up. Uh, uh, there's some evidence that it tends to kill the nutrients um, that, we, that we depend on. So on a number of different levels, you know, we, you know, we don't recommend microwave ovens. Uh, if you're a little bit patient, you can just heat up your stuff on the stove. Yeah, absolutely right. Joy in Missouri, you're on the air. Go ahead. What's your question for Josh? Good morning. Hi, Josh. I was Hi hopeful there. that I would have my... Um, story featured when you were in St. Louis. I'm in the Kansas City area, and I've been without power since June 9th of 2014, and unfortunately, they slapped me with a meter on February 14th, 2014, and I had a contract for a mechanical analog meter only. Since they slapped it on, and I called, and I was treated very horrendously, I might add, and I'm glad you're on today, by the way, not trying to talk over you or interrupt, but gosh, it's just crazy. Uh, they lie and say it's not a digital meter. I've looked it up. They're not installing them even according to what they're supposed to with the correct breaker box, and I'm sure that doesn't do any good either. Uh, the CIA, for um, those who don't know, did admit to snooping on people through their appliances as far back as at least 2012, and I knew of these problems back in 2011. My hunch was digital meters can't be good. I know Saskatchewan said, get them out of here, over 110,000. You're burning people's houses down. Our problem is KCPL is a really big corporate monopoly, and last week I witnessed where I take care of babies. They're trying to put them everywhere. Now we got one next door, and I saw them knock. Nobody's home. They slapped that meter on. We've tried everything we know to do. No lawyers want to get involved. No people seem to want to do any banding together. We don't know what to do, but we're really hurting here. I have a cancer patient in my home. And I know when we had that digital meter going, which they've never taken it off, they cut it off all the power back in June, as I said. We've lived without power for since that time. We don't know what to do. We can't bathe. We can't uh, shower. We can't cook with hot water to wash our hands. Nothing. We can do nothing. 
And the only advice we had was... Joy, 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 thanks so much for calling. Josh, do you have any suggestions for Joy? Yeah, well, thanks for calling in, Joy. I mean, I think, Gary, your uh, testimony is very important. I've heard uh, about your your case. Um, and, you know, uh, I'm very sorry for what you're going through. It's outrageous. It's uh, it, it, it's a cruel uh, uh, time that the, the utility companies uh, are, are, you know, are, are, are living through right now. And the utility companies are really forcing their agenda. And, uh, you know, sometimes the utilities will try to crack down. And sometimes okay, we'll be right back from the bottom of the flower with phone calls for Josh. Stay tuned. Catherine in Virginia, you are on the air. Catherine in Virginia, go ahead with your question for Josh Hart. Hi, good morning. Um, um, Josh, two and a half months ago, we had a smart meter put on our home, and actually it's our house in East Tennessee. And we had no uh, prior notification, nor did we give our permission. So immediately I started phoning, writing, all the government officials, the electrical co-op, on and on. I won't bore you with all the details, but nobody offered any help. They kept passing me along. And finally, the Tennessee Division of Consumer Affairs said they would help mediate my case. Last night, I got a letter in the mail from the electric co-op CEO saying, opting out is a special treatment, but if we do want to opt out, we can pay $75 for a meter and $30 a month to have the meter read, which I think is extortion. So my question is, oh, and by the way, he also said that my concerns about health problems, et cetera, lacked credible documentation. So my question is, and I have been to your website, where could I go to get some studies or paperwork to send to these people that show this is not something I'm just dreaming up? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your call, Catherine. Uh, if you go to stopsmartmeters.org and then you click on the science tab, it just says the science. It'll have links to a number of different um, articles and uh, findings from major medical and health organizations like the World Health Organization. It does say that smart meter radiation uh, may cause cancer in humans. That is their official position. Uh, so that's a good start to, uh, you know, to get those uh, things together. Another thing you should be aware of is that there um, has recently been uh, published a study on, a peer-reviewed study on uh, smart meter-related health impacts in Australia by uh, a, a, a researcher named Lamech, L-A-M-E-C-H. You should be able to find that online or um, on our website. I can certainly provide that to you if you email us also. Uh, so that's an important study uh, that documents the harm that these are causing. Uh, and at the end of the day, well, you know, what our advice is in dealing with utility company and regulatory agencies is, uh, is basically, you know, we're not going to get relief from them. Uh, the, the relief that has come has generally been a result of when people say, well, you know, this is not acceptable. We're going to have these meters removed. We're going to put analog meters on ourselves. And what they're worried about, what the utility companies are worried about, is a larger movement of people uh, removing their smart meters, putting on analogs. And so typically opt-out policies come as a result of, of pressure uh, from the public and a way to, to, to dissolve that pressure. But we do encourage you to not pay uh, extortion opt-out fees and to not allow the installation of a smart meter. Yes, the utility may disconnect your power. No, this is not legal. Uh, but, uh, uh, the, you know, w we do encourage people to go to the public, go to the media, tell us your story so we can document it, uh, you know, organize locally. We have uh, outreach materials on our, available on our website for shipping cost only, cards and brochures. Uh, so there are tools you can use. Um, but at the end of the day, if the utility does cut your power off, you know, you need to be ready to live for a few days without electricity, and long-term, you know, uh, if we're looking at not being dependent and not being vulnerable to coercion from the utility industry, uh, we should really be looking very strongly at off-grid technologies, which are getting better and better every day, batteries and solar panels, uh, which are viable, uh, and, you know, maybe we don't need to depend on these uh, utilities uh, to provide what we need uh, in our lives. Uh, Josh, let me ask you a quick question. Here in Florida, where I live, you know, we've had multiple now of county commission areas in Florida where people are basically trying to get off of smart meters and have gone off grid either with solar panels or basically just no power. They're saying now that's illegal in some communities. They're passing laws against it. You can actually be arrested for not having power. I mean, how can they do that, Josh? How can they say you have to have power we're going to arrest you? What kind of tyranny is that? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, Ted, we're, we're not only dealing with a technological debacle here. We're, we're dealing with a political and corruption problem. I mean, if you look at what, what's happened in the, in the political situation in California, uh, the, the, the former president of the California Public Utilities Commission, whose job it is to regulate the utilities to keep them safe, uh, Michael Peavy, uh, has, has just had his house searched uh, by uh, state agents looking for uh, laptops and other evidence uh, of his collusion with, with PG&E. And, and this collusion translates into, into um, deaths and injuries. You know, the, 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 the explosion in San Bruno happened because of lax oversight, and that killed eight people um, and destroyed an entire neighborhood. The, the, the harm that's come about through smart meters, you know, uh, it should not have happened. They should have had hearing. They should yeah, have had I don't, I'm not familiar with yeah. the explosion that happened. What happened with this explosion? How did it kill eight people? Did, did the whole neighborhood get wrecked it, because of the smart meter yeah, explosion? This was in the San Francisco Bay Area. This was back in 2010, I believe it was September, uh, and uh, a, a, a gas pipeline, a major, major transmission pipeline ignited and uh, uh, had a huge explosion, blew up uh, an entire neighborhood just south of San Francisco and San Bruno. Uh, among the victims was Jacqueline Greek, who was uh, who worked for the California Public Utilities Commission. She was, at the time, trying to uh, uh, increase the amount that PG pg e would have to pay for gas pipeline safety, um, and so that has led a lot of people to question whether, you know, her death was indeed an accident. Um, and that well, was, let me ask you, so, so but this has nothing to do with smart meters. This is the gas pipeline exploding right. from a major utility carrier. Catherine, do you have any other questions? Well, one quick one. Uh, Josh, just in your opinion, I read where you may try to sue these electrical companies in small claims court. Do you think that's even worth the time it would take to do that? I, I do, um, particularly if you've incurred expenses uh, associated with the smart meter deployment or with, with, with the, 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 their behavior. Uh, you know, there's been some success in small claims court where people have had to, sh let's say, shield their homes, spending thousands of dollars, uh, and there have been settlements with, with uh, electric companies here in California related to that. So I, I think that, you know, if you can take them to court, great. Superior court offers an option. Um, normally it requires a lawyer. Uh, in small claims court, you defend and you represent yourself. Uh, and so there are, there are advantages and disadvantages. Of course, we can't give legal advice, but we can tell you that people have had success in small claims court in the past um, and, and, and success not only in, in, in claiming for costs, but also uh, the judge will, um, in some circumstances, uh, order the analog back on, on the home. So that, that is something you can pursue. Uh, but again, you know, in your community, what we recommend is just talking to people about this. Don't let the utility get away with uh, threatening you or coercing you privately. They you know, make it public, um, hold them to account, let the public know, let the newspapers know, make this a, a community, uh, you know, issue and debate and, and put, you know, a, a pressure on the utility to, to, to relent. And if they don't go along, then you, you might want to consider, you know, other alternatives. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Now, Josh, let me, I have another question for you before we go to the next caller. You know, we always are hearing that the iPads and all these different types of electromagnetic devices are also causing radiation damage to our bodies, especially to young girls as we grow up. There's a man on the YouTube that's a bunch of, a bunch of heads on that. So that basically when you, when you hold an iPad on your lap, you're actually you're radiating your ovaries and you could cause egg damage or follicular damage to the uh, reproductive system in females. Is there any truth to that? Have you seen anything that actually proves any of that or are these, uh, the, or the amounts just that small? But he sounded like he was pretty credible to me when he was saying these things. Yeah, I mean, any any device that is uh, wireless, you know, an iPad or an iPhone or a laptop computer with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on, anything like that um, emits this radiation, uh, microwave radiation, and, and the, the World Health Organization does say it may cause cancer. And there's a tremendous amount of study uh, on DNA, single-strand and double-strand DNA breaks. These studies have been replicated. Uh, but if you talk to the government or industry, it's like the studies don't even exist, uh, and we're being fed a, a, a real a real tall tale here that, that these things are safe. And, and most people who haven't looked into the issue assume that the government will you know, make sure that, the, that these devices are safe before they are put on the market for sale. But that is definitely not the case. If you look at the history and you look into this and you talk to independent scientists, uh, I, I would express caution around any of these devices, any wireless devices. You know, I've chosen personally not to use wireless at all in my life, um, you know, except when it's an emergency and there's no 
software to plug in. I'm on the road, and I, I do use the Wi-Fi then. But if there's an alternative, I will plug plug it in if possible. Uh, the, the, this radiation is particularly uh, a threat to uh, developing fetuses, young children, elderly people, people with compromised immune systems or other medical conditions. And the American Academy of Environmental Medicine has warned people uh, to, to stay away from smart meters, and they've actually called on uh, governments to impose immediate moratoria on the on the uh, further deployment of, of smart metering technology because simply because we've heard so many thousands of stories of people being injured by the pulse radiation and then being sensitized to other forms of, of, of wireless uh, technology uh, that they were previously uh, you know tolerated just fine so these are a real health threat uh, in addition to the privacy and the fire and the overcharging and and really you know if we allow our, our billions of our own tax dollars to be used to threaten us in our own homes, what does that say about our, our democracy? We, we really got to stand up against this. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg of the te type of technology that they want to deploy. They want wireless tracking soft, uh, devices in your car. You know, they want you know, to, 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 to discontinue landlines. And well, look, John, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you another question real quick. What do you know about lily waves? You know, uh, that's an awful lot. So probably best to ask someone else about that. Okay, everybody, I want everybody to go online and Google lily waves. I want you guys to learn about what a lily wave really is and how that's transmitted through the power lines. Also, what you need to realize is this. When women are born, when girls are born, when baby females are born, human beings, uh, they basically are born with all of the eggs they're ever going to have. Their eggs aren't being produced over and over and over again. And so when you're constantly allowing a young girl to use an iPad or be exposed to this electromagnetic radiation, especially they're holding these devices on their lap, it can actually increase the amount of radiation that's being submitted to, into these eggs. And uh, you you know, we already know that the DNA can break down and break apart, and so we have all kinds of damage, especially even when women are pregnant. I know the research has been done is pretty, pretty, pretty significant on that. So if you have young girls, keep away from the iPads. I mean, use some type of shielding. I mean, just use the, just turn it on airplane mode if you have to, just to get that thing to stop transmitting. I think that's really, really important. Let's go to Mike in Virginia. Uh, Mike in Virginia, you were on the air. You got a question for Josh? Yeah, number one. First, what is that website called? Go ahead, Josh. Uh, we're, we're, our website is stopsmartmeters.org. Stopsmartmeters.org. Okay. Number two, uh, they put one on my house several years ago. Uh, it's digital. Now, is that a smart meter? It, it, it's probably about four years ago they stuck it on here. So, I came home one day and it was sitting on there. I said, we know, where did this come from, you know? Yeah, that's the way they like to do it. Just slap it on your house and with no warning or permission asked or anything. You know, the, 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 the utility companies around the country like to confuse you. You call them up and, you know, you say, oh, you just put a meter on my house. Is it a smart meter? And I say, oh, no, no, it's a, it's a digital meter. It's, a, it's, it's not the kind that have been causing problems in California. You know, the, 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 the term smart meter has become tainted. So they're trying to use right. alternate, alternate uh, labels like AMR meter or digital meter. Um, but the, the reality is, is that if you want to avoid these problems, Problems that have been identified, you need to insist on a purely electromechanical analog meter and, and take no compromises, no digital meters, no radio off. If they say that they don't have analog meters, they're they're they're, they're deceiving you. Uh, they've just removed millions of these things, uh, and they have them lying around in warehouses. So so uh, you need to demand an electromechanical analog meter if it has a screen, if it's made of plastic, uh, if it has an LCD screen. These are all warning signs uh, that it's a, 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 a smart meter. Yeah. Okay, one other thing. Now, the meter sitting on my house just in itself, I have no smart appliances. I have all dumb appliances, okay? Uh, <laughs> does it radiate the, anything to the wall of the house? Yeah, like, the smart... Kind of Smart meters, um, it, there's a couple different types of smart meters. One is the AMI meter, which is um, the kind of mesh network meter. Uh, those are always transmitting to their neighboring meters, passing on your data to, to your neighbors and then on to the ne next house. Um, and then there's the, there's the, the, the type of smart meter called AMR meter, um, automated meter reading, which is when a, uh, a, a utility staff person drives by in their truck and uses a little device uh, to, to measure the, 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 the signals that are coming out. But, but the antenna within a smart meter is a 300, emits a radiation in a 360-degree sphere. So if there's one on the side of your house, it's not like it's just radiating out away from your house. It's definitely um, ascending radiation into your home, and, and not 
only RF radiation, but also dirty electricity, um, which is like pollution on your electric line, uh, yeah. and, and that can come in and radiate from your wiring. And so it's a good idea, it's good practice whether or not you have a smart meter uh, to, to turn off your, your circuits at night. You know, electricity is fantastically useful, uh, but at the same time, there are uh, real draw, serious uh, health drawbacks, uh, and we need to be aware of that. We just need to minimize the risk if we're going to use this technology. But, Josh, let me ask you another question real quick. If you have a smart meter installed on your wall like on the outside of the garage and you know that it's radiating 360 degrees, that would seem to indicate that you have to do the back of the garage wall, too, on the inside of the garage. Exactly. Yeah, that's where we see a lot of mistakes happen when people try to shield their smart meter. They put, like, a, you know, cup of foil over the, over the, over the front of it, and then all that does is just reflect all that radiation back into the home, so you do need that addition. But, but again, you know, you have a right to use an analog meter. Uh, it's your home. It's not the property of the utility company, and um, it, it, it's people who insist on that right um, who, who make it possible for other people to take advantage of that. So we, we really need brave people to, to you know, risk uh, these threats that the utility companies are, are putting out there of disconnection and really stand strong and refuse to back down. You know, and that's what we're doing here in, in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. We're been without electricity for a year now, and uh, we're not we're not paying them, um, but we are taking them to court, uh, and we are uh, uh, seeking justice in this in this case. Well, Mike, thanks for calling, uh, James in Carolina. James in Carolina, you're live. Go ahead. Hi, James. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. Um, I do have a smart meter that was slapped on just without uh, prior notice, but uh, there's something more sinister, I believe, in my community. Uh, Duke Energy is our uh, power company, and we're uh, one year uh, in to uh, well, a year ago, that is, a coal ash spill, tons upon tons of coal ash from a facility was uh, near a, the, a river called the Dan River, um, and I think it was deliberate, and I don't know if any other um, coal ash spills have been happening around, and I think there's uh, they're trying to take uh, control over other resources such as water and um, using this as a catalyst for further agenda. But I just want to make that comment and see if uh, uh, Ted, uh, I believe that's the guest name, Ted. Josh, uh, Josh, Josh is the guest name. Uh, James, thanks, thanks so much. Thank you uh, for Josh, what do you think yeah. about you think trying to control well, all the different utilities? Yeah, I mean, Duke is a, Duke is a big, um, you know, monolithic uh, energy company. Uh, you know, these companies have, have, have ceased becoming, uh, ceased being a, a, you know, service industry and have started uh, turning against the public and, and, and threatening them. You know, I really think the, the, the model of centralized investor-owned utility um, business in this country has run its course, and we really need to look um, not only question just smart meter technology or the smart grid or the coal-fired power plant or the transmission lines or any all these other things that are wrong with the grid, but actually, you know, do we really need a grid at all? Uh, no, okay, we're, we're, running, we're, we're running, running, running out of time. We're running out of time, Josh. We've got a bunch of phone calls. Uh, Francis in North Carolina, go ahead. You're on live with Josh. Hi, fellas. Uh, Hi. This is a question for you. What do you think of the uh, similar word by Deborah Tavores about, uh, regarding the subject matter? Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Francis. Deborah Tavores, what do you think about her work on this topic? She's a, an activist um, based in the North Bay in San Francisco, um, and she's done a lot of good work. Uh, and we have, um, you know, back in when, when in 2011, when uh, pg and was deploying, uh, we worked with our group to, to blockade uh, a deployment yard uh, to prevent them from deploying in our community. So, yeah, Deborah, Deborah and I are, are colleagues, and uh, uh, we've we worked together on, on smart meter issues here in California. Excellent. Come back to the break. Final segment with Josh. I've been an incredible conversation for the past hour. Uh, these are a major problem in the United States with these smart meters, this electromagnetic frequency radiation that we're being exposed to on an ongoing basis uh, changes your cellular structure. It changes your food. It changes your DNA. It changes everything. This is bad. We're like in a toxic soup of radiation, and we need to stop it. And we need to ask our power companies to remove these digital meters and put on analog meters. Just because it doesn't say smart meter doesn't mean it's not a transmitting meter. And that's something that I learned today also because I thought it had to say smart meter on it, but I'm sure they're obfuscating that and they're basically closing up the facts. Uh, Josh, I want to thank you so much for having me, for being on with me today. We've got three more phone calls. I want to take them very quickly. I'm going to let you go to the top of the hour. And yeah, uh, we're thank you, to, We're going to have to have you back on again. So let's go ahead. We've had... 
It's Robbie in Ohio has been holding for a while. Let's go ahead and get him on the air right now. Go ahead, Robbie in Ohio. Hey, thanks for taking my call. You know, Eisenhower said be worth the military industrial complex. And you know, uh, Einstein said, I fear our technology has exceeded our humanity. I'm a retired guy, not that. And, and they told me they just shut off my electric if I don't let them put the meter on. So I had a choice of accepting or not. If I take and put a really high magnetic force magnet, magnet around that meter, Will it cut down the EMRIs? Thank you, Paul, Robbie. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. Well, like, well yeah, I'm not sure there's a lot of evidence for that. I, I've had, people have sent us uh, things about how to dis, you know, disable your smart meter with a microwave oven, and a lot of it sounds pretty dangerous to us. I, I think that the safest thing you know, is, is the, the, the course of action that we recommend. Uh, if, if, a, if a utility has forced a smart meter on your home, uh, you know, we have a sample letter on our website um, under the sample letter tab, and you simply send that letter to them saying you know, that you have a, a deadline to remove this un, uh, permanent meter from my house, and if you don't do that, we're going to hire an electrician and buy an analog meter online and uh, and replace it ourselves. So that really is, you know, the the, the 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 option. Of course, they can always disconnect their power, but if you do it along with your community, um, I know that. Um, Dozens and dozens of people are doing this in, in you know, Michigan altogether. So it helps if you if you get other people who are you know connect with others who are also feel similarly and, and work together. Always, it's all you're always stronger together. Okay, uh, Chris from Nevada, go ahead. Thank you very much for your hard work and your Herculean efforts, Josh. Thank I'm you. Thank you. I'm a politically assassinated union electrician that fell away on YouTube being ejected from a PUC hearing when I uttered one word in objection to the lies that the Nevada Power was putting out, uh, I merely said objection. And I then so I had served them with documents proving that these were military devices, acoustic weapons under a military document, and noticed them at that time about three years ago. Wait, 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 Chris, Chris, hang on, hang on, Chris, whoa, slow down a second. You're saying the smart meters are military weapons. Absolutely. There's a okay. military document from the Army that talks about RFI acoustic weapons, and that is precisely what I served to them. I noticed them there would be deaths and fires to these meters, and we've had them in northern Nevada, in the I couldn't make this up, Sparks, Nevada, Reno area, where they actually had deaths occur from smart meter missing uh, installation. Wow. Okay, Chris and Nevada will be our last phone call. Sorry, David, New York, we're out of time. Uh, Josh, you want to comment on that before we go to the final uh, break? Well, uh, Nevada Energy has, you know, um, their smart meters have been responsible for multiple uh, fires, including one death and a serious injury in, in Reno, um, as, as the caller said, and uh, they need to be held to account. Unfortunately, the, the public utilities commissions are not up to the task and are working in collusion with the uh, uh, utility uh, industry to cover up safety hazards. So we cannot, we no longer really rely on these utility commissions to keep us safe. Josh, thanks again. Uh, this is Josh with my second guest for the third hour. This is Ted Brewer. I'll be back with you guys next Tuesday, and thanks for listening. Thanks so much, Ted. Thank you, Josh.